BKFC 22. The top three fights are filled with drama, as I'm sure a lot of you guys saw what took place yesterday between Lorenzo Hunt and Hector Lombard. I had the pleasure of being there live and seeing that take place right in front of me. Uh, it's not just that fight, though. The co-main event and the co-co-main event are filled with drama as well. I'm very excited for these fights. You guys know I like this, this knuckle-up type of action here. It's going down tomorrow night. We're going to get into the top three fights. Let's get into it. The MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What is up, you guys? BKFC 22. As I said, we're just going to be talking about the top three fights here. Uh, these are the fights that I'm the most excited for. There are some other fights that are on the card that are that are definitely worth talking about. But uh, just to make t today's show a little bit more convenient, we'll just brush upon these. But uh, other fights you guys do want to keep an eye on, man. Uh, Fra Francisco Ricci, the Italian fighter, been looking pretty good uh, since fighting over in the bare knuckles scene. Mike Kyle, former Strike Force veteran, uh, taking on Gustavo Trujillo. Trujillo. Uh, what else we got over here? Um, you know, Brian Maxwell, we've seen him on the scene. Uh, he, he had a big name fight not too long ago. I believe he did fight Chad Ocho Cinco. Um, you know, so just, just to brush upon some of those fights, uh, Marcus Brimage, uh, Conor McGregor's first UFC fight that he's that he ever had. And uh, you guys know what happened in that fight. Conor took him out, taking on Will Shutt. And, um, you know, that, that's going to lead us to the first fight that we're going to be talking about here in today's episode pearl gonzalez taking on Breton hart and uh, you guys know hart has been looking very good as of recently we know that she spoiled the party against Paige van zandt uh you know everybody thought Paige was gonna go over to the bare knuckle fc scene and start to to wreak havoc that was not the case at all uh you know this girl Breton hart uh you know she she's a, a an interesting character to say the least you know i, I heard trash talking is unique i won't say that it's necessarily bad but it's a little different and uh like i said i had the pleasure of watching her and pearl go at it yesterday and uh, and hart was you know just just right on par how she usually is you know just kind of like those awkward comments to an extent you don't know if she's kind of like joking and she's about to crack up but she's dead serious um you know but but you know what it works for her because she definitely knows what she's doing. She has some professional boxing experience. She is the the wife of the heavyweight uh, champion over in the BKFC, Joey Beltron, uh, former UFC fighter. And uh, you know, as a couple, they they really got things going on right now. Both of them are handling business. They they fit perfectly in the uh, bare knuckle scene. Pearl Gonzalez, Pearl Gonzalez, excuse me. She makes her her bare knuckle debut in her last fight. Uh, of course, you guys are all very familiar with Pearl. Pearl, a former UFC fighter, a former Invicta fighter, uh, a well-known MMA fighter, uh, training out of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, uh, which, you know, we ain't using Jiu-Jitsu over here in the BKFC, BKFC scene. She's 35 years old, and um, 35 years old, and in her last fight, like I said, she was victorious in her BKFC, BKFC debut against Carissa Sigala. And uh, she looked very good in that fight. You know, her opponent was a little undersized, and uh, Pearl was just really styling on her, pumping the jab. I mean, she looked good on the feet. She really did. Uh, but this is a whole different type of fight here. Again, Britain Hart definitely knows how to to use her jab, knows how to throw nice long straight punches, can get dirty when she gets on the inside. She's just an all-around uh, so very, very solid fighter. And uh, you see her cracking page with a nice right straight. Good footwork, too. She, she uses her footwork very nicely. Uh, she goes in and out. She, she mixes things up, has her opponents uh, guessing what, what's coming next there. And, uh, and Pearl, man. Pearl, uh, you know, she was making some noise at the press conference, too, man, if you guys catch my drift. I mean, she's, she's looking to, to be a big star in, um, in a couple different ways. You know what I mean? If, if she could deliver as far as the fighting goes, uh, that that's one thing, but you know she has the oh, I don't know about all this, but you know she she has the uh, the other little X factor here too. You know BKFC would love to to push her, and um, you know it's it's all going to be put in the light tomorrow. If she can go out there and take out Hart, then we know that she is very legit as far as throwing knuckles. And um, you know what I'm going to say here is is that I liked what I saw from Pearl against uh, Carissa Sigala, but. I have to pick Bertan Hart here. I have to pick her uh, based on the, the work that she's been doing as of recently, based on, on the, the boxing experience that she has, even though she wasn't winning all those fights in the boxing scene, that that boxing experience does carry weight, in my opinion, compared to just fighting MMA. And um, and again, as of recently, um, you know, she, uh, 
let's see here. So she started off in BKFC back on the Rawlings versus Hart card. She had that split decision loss against Beck Rawlings. Um, excuse me, yeah, that was the, the headliner there too. Uh, so she came up a little bit short. That was a tough fight there. Uh, Dr. Stoppage loss against Christine Ferreria. And then um, takes a little bit of time off, has some boxing bouts, but then gets things really going as of recently. Takes out Randine Ekom, takes out Paige Van Zandt, and then in her last fight takes out Jenny uh, Clasias. And um, excuse me if I'm butchering the name there, but uh, she looked very, very good in that fight against Jenny and, and just really worked her there, man. Just that, that's, that was really her coming out party. Um, and again, I'm going to roll with Hart here. Uh, we don't have a reach on Pearl. Um, and, uh, you know, so we're missing some stats here and there. But, uh, you know, both these girls physically kind of stand up to each other. Um, I mean, Hart is three inches taller. We have a 50, 68, 68 inch reach on Gonzalez, which I think is pretty good compared to what her height is. I don't expect Hart to have a significantly longer reach there, maybe 69. I don't know about that. Maybe we can get a reach on her there. Um, she's 31. She's fighting out of Virginia. She was talking about it at the press conference. She said she grew up on the streets of Virginia. And uh, Gonzalez said there is no streets over in Virginia. You grew up in the woods over there. Uh, it, it was funny, man. They were going at it. Uh, you know, we take a look at the line real quick. Um, you know, Britann Hart is a minus 225 favorite with the comeback on Pro Gonzalez at plus 170. It's a little interesting. I think the fight could play out a little bit closer than that, but I do understand why Hart's starting to get some respect, and I'm going to be rolling with Hart in that fight as well. Um, so, yes, Britain Hart to, to win that fight there. Now, I'm very excited for this fight here in the co-main event of the card. We got Luis Palomino taking on that win. You guys know we got gold on the line here. Luis Palomino, the champ. He's 41 years old. Uh, Luis, of course, has been in a lot of big name mixed martial arts fights. You guys remember him brawling it out with Justin Gaethje back in world, the World Series of Fighting. Uh, Luis, just always a, a class act. Um, you know, take this into consideration. You know, Luis uh, did recently have COVID. He lost a lot of weight. Uh, there was talks about him not fighting all the way until next year. But you know what, man? He decided that he was feeling better and uh, he, he was getting things together a, a little bit more rapidly than he initially thought maybe that thing how things would play out and he decided to take this fight here in november uh of course you guys know dat win has been was ruthless uh during this whole situation uh dat win was was calling him out he didn't care not to hear none about that uh that that covid type stuff there um you know he, he's telling him sign the paper he ain't waiting he's coming for you you know he, he was telling palomino to stop hiding and uh hey look the fight's taking place tomorrow night so we're gonna see what's gonna go down here uh but this is a fight that really has some some beef going on speaking of beef uh you know that win does have his own restaurant over in vero beach a little bit north of me i might pop in there and uh, and say what's up and uh you know i'm a big fan of what, what that win is about i like his attitude the guy is ruthless uh, you guys know me. I, I like my fighters that have that type of personality. Um, you know, not a... I don't know why Instagram doesn't want to show these, but... Uh, uh, let's see here. But uh, you guys know the deal with Wynn, man. Just, he is not taking it lightly on any of his opponents, whether it's in the in the ring or even just outside the ring, just roasting them. Um, as far as his skills go, the dude is very legit. I uh, had the pleasure of watching him live not too long ago at a BKFC event, and he was actually the only exciting fight on that fight card, okay? He was literally the only, it, it was very strange because you guys know BKFC always delivers, but of course, my luck, the last BKFC fight that I go to, um, which was that, that was a fight card where we actually had Hector on it as well, um, pull it up real quick, but that win was the only guy with the knockout on that card, okay? And that was against... Uh, let's pull that up real quick. It was this one right here. BKFC 10, Lombard versus Mundell. He knocked out uh, Ab Abdiel Velazquez. Knocked him out in the first round. The crowd was going crazy. That was back in 2020 in uh, Feb February. And uh, since then, he he took out Johnny Bedford to take the belt. Um, I believe that was for the... Uh, excuse me there if I don't know the name of it. But the, the Diamond... The Diamond X, whatever they call that, that. That other little special belt. I believe that's what it was for. Um, so... Uh, that win, 39 years old, Luis Palomino in his 40s. Both these guys a little bit up there in age, but it doesn't matter, man. Both these guys look to be in phenomenal shape. They've been delivering as of recently. And um, again, that win looked excellent against Johnny Bedford. Great head movement, uh, great boxing. Again, let's remember now, this guy, that win is a legit boxer. You know, he, he has a, a world of experience on the boxing scene. He was very well known over there. Uh, you take a look. Um, 
at some of his boxing matches here, taking out guys like Miguel Flores, Jesus Luli, I guess we'll say there. Um, you know, but but people that know about him, uh, you know, of course, he's, he's had a lot more boxing matches than just what they're showing here on Topology 2. Um, so I guess maybe they weren't considered professional bouts or whatnot, but I know he, he has a world of experience on the boxing scene. Uh, so do understand that. Uh, he's a guy that's very, very comfortable throwing hands. And uh, Luis Palomino, I mean, you could say the same thing for him. He's been act looking like an absolute beast as of recently. Had the pleasure of watching him uh, fight live as well as of recently, where he took out um, former UFC fighter and Jim Ehlers. Uh, that's where he took gold, right? And uh, that was an excellent fight. And uh, went in there, took him out in the first round. And uh, after that, he bounces back with the victory over Tyler Goodjohn. You guys know there was a lot of beef going into that fight. So if we're going to take a little something from that fight, know that that Tyler Goodjohn was really trying to get under Luis Palomino's skin the same way that that win is trying to do here and it really didn't have a, any effect on him he went in there and he absolutely butchered Tyler Goodjohn remember that he absolutely butchered him if you saw Tyler's face um Luis put a clinic on him could Luis do that again here to that win I'm going to tell you guys this. I, I got Luis winning this fight, and I think it's very likely that he goes in there and does some serious damage because that's what Luis is about. He has nasty power. He's been looking sharp as a razor as, as of recently. Uh, I'm a little curious to see how he bounces back from uh, the health issues that he's had, but he looks to be in good shape. And um, I don't necessarily think that that win's going to allow this to be as easy as as a fight for him as, as Tyler Goodjohn did allow it to be. I think that win will be a little bit more of a tough cookie in there. Uh, I think his head movement's a little bit better than Tyler's. Tyler has some good head movement too. I think that wins is a little bit better and he can make you pay when you miss a little bit more so. Uh, this is a great fight. Uh, I am taking my boy Luis Palomino to win the fight, but let me make this clear. I'm a big fan of that wins as well and uh, I like everything that he has going on and he's very live in this fight. This is a very close fight, but I think that Luis might have a little bit more sting on his punches. We might see a little bit more damage landed, maybe a little bit more blood from his side and um, take a look at the line. Minus 130 favorite for Luis Palomino with that win at even odds there. So a very close line. It's an excellent match. These guys were going at it at the press conference. Uh, like I said, all three of these fights, the beef was, was cooking up. And I'm excited to see who comes out the victor there. I'm going to roll with Luis Palomino. That takes us to the main event. Hector Lombard taking on Lorenzo Hunt. Uh, two guys that are really cut from a different cloth, man. Let, let, let's call it for what it is. Lorenzo Hunt's a beast of a man. But Hector Lombard is a, a world-class fighter. He has reached the, the top of the game at uh, you know specific fields that he's participated in. And of course, that being mixed martial arts, uh, the guy is an absolute stud, an absolute uh, physical specimen. Um, you know, nothing but the, the utmost respect for Hector. I've uh, been a big fan of his uh, for a while, man. I had the pleasure of him actually shooting me a DM randomly just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so that was actually pretty cool. Uh, just shot me a DM and literally just said, hey, man, I like the work that you're doing. So I guess he came across some of the content uh, that, that I had out there. So that, that was pretty cool. Uh, Small World, one of my good friends, Ted is actually a good friend of his. Uh, so I was actually supposed to meet him at a little party a couple months ago, but he actually didn't show up. Uh, but one of my good friends is was a neighbor of Hector's. So, um, you know, it was pretty cool. The last fight that I went to see him at that, that Mundell fight, I was chilling with my boy there and uh, his... His girlfriend was good friends with Hector's uh, girlfriend at the time. I don't know if they're still together or what's going on with that, but I was watching the fight. We know Hector's girl and all their little crowd there. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get to really meet him in person, but I'm sure that I will very soon. And, uh, again, nothing but respect for Hector. I like everything he's about. This guy is, is strictly about business. This guy is a, a savage. He's a killer in the ring. And, um, you know, I, I've been watching him from, from way back, way back in the day, man, Hector. You know, I remember, uh, you know, watching him on the bellator scene watching him destroy guys in the bellator scene for for forever you know what i mean he was the the reigning middleweight champion uh people thought that he was undersized because he was kind of short uh you know for the division but he, the guy is just built like a tank and he still is built like a tank i mean hector is is you know very much in shape he's five foot nine he's 43 years old but really he's not missing a beat here uh the guy is a specimen uh you know let, let's talk about his line of work um you know, going into the beat to the bare, bare knuckle FC scene, uh, takes out David Mundell in his debut, styled on him there, knocks out Kendall Grove uh, in his second match there, and then he had the Joe Riggs fight. Now, if you guys remember uh, the the Joe Riggs fight, you could pull it up on YouTube. Bare knuckle FC has it on their YouTube page. Um, Hector was looking great in that fight, 
up until about the last minute or so of that fight, Joe Riggs was starting to take over a little bit. He landed a big shot there. Uh, but Hector, by no means, was out of that fight, man. You saw him being savvy, you know, call it what you want, but, you know, pulling on the shorts, as you see right there. And then it, then we had that awkward moment where he punched Joe in the eye. Joe said it was a, a finger poke. It was very strange. And then all of a sudden, Joe didn't want to continue to fight. The referee didn't know what was going on. It was a very strange ending. Um, wasn't the best look for Hector, but I did like the way that he was when all that was starting to happen, that his killer instinct did take in, and he was looking good in the early parts of that fight. Uh, you know Hector has that 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 tricky southpaw type of style where uh, you know he's you know he's bobbing and weaving, man. He's cutting corners. He's coming in. He's looking to take your head off. I mean, Hector is an absolute destroyer, and uh, he could put any man out with one shot, especially w w with the with the bare knuckle situation going on here. I mean, if he touches you, you're going out. And if if he lands on, on Lorenzo, Lorenzo is going out. Lorenzo Hunt on, on the other side, man, three and five as a professional mixed martial artist. I mean, I, I don't know how exactly how that's going to translate over to the, the bare knuckle scene. But um, again, just to kind of harp on the difference of these men as far as what they have done in their careers. Um, you know, but Lorenzo Hunt's looking to, to do something big time here. He's looking to hold gold over here. Uh, he basically already stole the belt. You know, I told you guys I was over there. I, I grabbed this. Luckily, I pulled my phone out, started recording right as this incident happened. Uh, so, you know, you guys can catch me on Instagram, MMA Fortune Teller underscore for all types of cool content like this. And I uh, got the little captions there. But uh, you, you guys saw this video, man. It was hectic. Uh, and, you know, I was getting a, a kick out of it. So, um, made this little thing too. Let me not forget. Luis Palomino and that win. Bad blood. Go catch me on on instagram boys and um you know back to this fight man this is a this is a this is the fight of the card you know initially there i was really going into this fight excited about the the dat win and palomino fight which i still am and i thought the bad blood was a little bit worse in that fight but after what happened yesterday you guys know what initially happened back in the day too where, where lombard you know, attacked, or I don't want to say attacked, Hunt jumped in his face, came up from behind him, and then, you know, Lombard hit, Lombard hit him with the two-piece, which you can't blame him at all. Um, I mean, there's a lot of drama right now going into this fight, man. I could see this this type of fight, you know, brewing over, you know what I mean? Like, like literally spilling over after the fight is done. I don't know if these guys are going to be shaking hands or anything like that. Um, I think there's some real, real bad blood. I mean, I think this is the bad blood fight. I think Wynn and Palomino shake hands and they squash it. That's what I think. Um, so I think that these guys are going to get after it early. You guys know when it comes to, to throwing hands in the bare knuckle FC scene, anything could happen in there. You make one false move, you get clipped. You're put on queer street. Good luck coming back. You're going to be wobbled up and uh, it could happen to either of these men. I definitely believe that Hunt has the power to to hurt anybody. We've seen Hector wobbled here and there um but we've definitely seen hector wobble and drop a lot of other men okay so let's not forget about that either i'm gonna be rolling here with, with my boy hector uh hector is just he's very technical i don't think that he gets all the credit for for how technical of a fighter he he is and i'm talking about even going back to his mma days he's an extremely technical fighter you don't just go out there and continuously knock guys out left and right uh without doing something right there it's not just power you see him here, great footwork. He's very tricky. I could see him managing that distance there, closing the distance, getting on the inside, and clipping this dude Hunt easily as well. And uh, I am rolling with my boy Hector Lombard here. And, uh, you know, but, but, but let's not get it twisted, man. Uh, this guy Hunt is for real. He's definitely for real. And, uh, and as of recently, you remember the Josh Dyer fight, who's, that fight he's coming off of? Looked very good in that fight. It says lost contact. If you guys remember, that guy Dyer was getting dropped left and right. Very tough for hanging in the fight, but he was looking for a way out, and he, and he wasn't even bringing anything to the table in that fight once he was hurt. I mean, Hunt's got some real power. Uh, knocked out Rob Moreau before, before that. Knocked out Davian Green before that. That was a nasty one. And knocked out Eric Lozano. So, you know, he, he's been putting dudes out. And again, you guys know, you know the drama in, in this fight, man. It's, it started a little bit ago. We saw Hunt at the, we saw Hunt at the, the Joe Riggs and Lombard stare down. He was sitting there holding the belt, looking over. We saw that beef starting to brew and uh, it will be settled tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be settled. Otherwise it's going to continue to the, to the streets after or to whenever these guys continue to see each other. Um, I, I think this fight is going to deliver. I like my boy Hector here. And real quick, let's touch upon those betting lines. Hector Lombard, a minus 150 right now. A lot of action just came in on him. I'll tell you that right now because Hector 
earlier this was a a pickem. This was a pickem, I believe. It was a minus 115 and minus 115. Um, I do believe that's the case. Um, which you could you could see it scroll on the bottom when I locked that in earlier when I checked the odds. So action coming in on Hector. People look to be siding with the the grade A professional here. I'm taking Lombard too. It's a crazy one. You guys going to be watching these fights or what? I'm assuming if you watch this breakdown here to the end, you're going to be watching these fights tomorrow. Comment below. Tell me who you guys got. Tell me what fight you're most excited for. Hit that like button. Subscribe. And on that note, signing out. Teller. The MMA, the MMA Fortune Teller. Fortune the Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller.